Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to explain one very popular architecture widely used in serverless data pipeline nowadays by many companies. Okay, so suppose there is a user who is uploading the data directly using AWS Management Console or using some API to our S3 data lake. Okay, and from that S3, we are having an event notification which triggered the backend Lambda which process the S3 files or maybe the Lambda is triggering some transient EMR cluster or AWS Glue Spark job who is processing the S3 files. Okay. Now, generally, if you have a direct connectivity between S3 event and Lambda, then the problem which you might face is, suppose in a very rapid speed, the events are occurring in S3, then in that same speed, the Lambda need to scale up or Lambda will trigger the backend glue or spark job. Okay, but we might not want that. What we want? We want to accumulate certain number of S3 events and then we want to trigger Lambda ones. That can be one scenario or sometimes we might not trigger some other glue or EMR job, but rather this Lambda itself is taking some time to process. But what time it is taking that is basically not matching the frequency in which s3 events are getting generated okay so obviously one thing if you have a direct connection then the lambda also need to scale up or process the events in the same speed in which the events are coming right so to avoid that kind of bottleneck what we generally do we put an sqs queue in the middle so that if in a very rapid speed also S3 events are coming, they will be keep on getting accumulated in our SQS queue and the Lambda will read the S3 events from this SQS queue in a batch manner and it will process them. Okay, so that's the better architecture. So let me show you that particular implementation only in today's discussion with complete code from scratch. So first step what we have to do, we have to create a SQS queue. Okay. So I will go to AWS Management Console and I will go to Simple Queue Service and here I will be creating an SQS queue. Okay. So create queue. Sama 09 test yt demo. Some name I am giving. And then here what I will do. Keeping all other properties default, I will create the queue. Now as a next step what I will do. I will create one S3 bucket. Okay. For this demo. So here I will go to create bucket. And bucket name I can give demo sama yt some name I have given and then here what I will do keeping all other properties default I will create the bucket and for the demo I will create some folder also inside the bucket because most of the time inside bucket we are having different folders for different projects right so here I will be giving the name csv store okay and here I will create the folder right now, as per architecture, what should happen? The S3 event should be getting published to SQS queue. So the proper access policy should be maintained in this flow, right? So I need to update the SQS access policy. So I will go to SQS and I will click on edit. If I go below, here you will see policy generator is there. So I will click on policy generator and here SQS queue policy we want to create. Effect I want to allow. Principle as of now I am keeping everything and action also all kind is this kind of event i want to allow and amazon resource name so here i need to give access for this sqs queue right so sqs queue resource here and i'll be taking i'll paste that and in the condition i will put such that s3 can publish the event okay so the source for sqs will be s3 so here source here in here in the value part i will put the value of my s3 okay so here I will go to my bucket, I will go to property section and here in the resource name, I will be copying that and I will add that, okay. I will add the condition and then here I will add the statement and here I will click on generate policy. If you need, you can add other policies also. As of now, we are fine with this. So I will just paste that and here I will click on save in the SQS, okay. So now SQS policy we have set up. Now what we can do, we can create the event notification from S3 to SQS, okay. So in S3, in our bucket, in the property section, if I go a little bit below, here you will see event notification. So we'll create an event notification, demo, testing, yt, sama, some name I have given. As of now, we want to send notification only for object creation, so I am keeping this. If you want for delete object also, then you can enable other options as well, okay. So if I go a little below, 
here you will see that we want to send notification to SQS queue and here I can choose from the drop down our SQS queue okay and I will click on save changes right so here you have seen without any error we have set up the integration because we have set up the access policy properly if you face any issue in setting up the integration between S3 and SQS in the event notification then you need to reconfirm the access policy generation step okay there you might be doing some mistake that's why you are getting error in creating the event notification okay right so here as of now i have not uploaded any object so no event is generated so our sqs queue should be empty right but if i go to sqs queue in the queue section if i go here you will see what message available is one and why this thing is happening the reason is very simple whenever we create an integration between our s3 and sqs then s3 send a test event okay and that's the test event here what we are seeing even i can show you that i can go inside queue and go to send and receive message and here i can click on poll for message here i'll be getting the message i can click on that here you will see it is s3 test event in the body it is clearly written okay so i will click on done and stop the polling so based on our architecture s3 sqs part is done now we need to work with lambda so i can close this access policy generation step okay and here I have stopped the polling. If I go to queue currently, you should be having only one message available. Perfect, right? Now here what I will do, I will open AWS Management Console in a new tab, okay? And here I will click on Lambda. And here I will create function, okay? So demo yt sqs s3 lambda integration. Some name I am giving as of now spelling mistake also fine. So runtime I am keeping Python 3.9 and here I will create the function. Okay. So here our function is created. I will just delete this particular part and I will paste a code which I already created. I will explain you the code line by line. No worries. Just let me first make the setup and show you the demo. Then I will explain the code which will make much more sense to you. So here I will deploy this. So here our lambda code is deployed. Now here if you see the architecture, lambda will read the S3 events from SQS, okay. So the lambda policy should have SQS access. So let's do that. So I will go to configurations. I will go to permission section. And here this is the lambda role. I will add SQS access in it, okay. So here in the permission I can go, add permission attach policy and here I can search SQS, SQS full access I can go right okay to this line. So here the policy is updated perfect. Now what I will do I will go to code and if you see here what I am doing I am basically importing JSON because JSON.dumps, JSON.loads etc often required. Here I am printing the event. Here the whole operation I have kept inside try catch block. So here inside try block if you see here I am extracting the value corresponding to the record key in the event and I am doing some operation okay. I am just printing the bucket name and object name whatever uploaded just for demo purpose if you want you can do any kind of activity. So let's first set up the trigger from SQS to lambda but before that what I will do I will upload some files here okay. So here I will click on upload and here I will add file okay. So here I am uploading a Segusa file in the bucket level okay soon what should happen that in the back end one s3 event notification should be set to sqs queue okay and even inside this particular folder also let me upload a file okay so here actually in our sqs queue total how many messages should be there total three messages one message is for test event one is for this setosa.csv one is another file what we uploaded inside the folder that is varsicolor.csv okay so if i go to sqs if i refresh here you will see message available 3 that means sqs s3 integration perfectly work now what i will do i will configure the sqs trigger for lambda okay so i will add sqs here is my sqs that size as of now i am keeping very small value like and patch window also i am keeping very less maybe for 10 seconds Okay, and here I will add that. Okay, so here if you see that here currently in the trigger, the state is creating. So it is going to take some time to create the integration and the trigger between the lambda and SQS. Once that is done, what will happen? 
the lambda will consume the messages from the SQS queue and it will print in the CloudWatch logs. And from that logs, we'll try to explore what code we have. Written, okay. So here, if I go to SQS and if I refresh, so once the lambda SQS integration will be set up, message available will be zero because our lambda will basically consume all the messages from this queue, right? So here you can see message in flight one, and here almost all the messages will be consumed. See, here message available is also zero, message in flight also zero. So that means our lambda has worked perfectly. If I go to monitor section. And here, if I click on view logs in CloudWatch, here we'll see that some logs are getting printed, and let's try to explore from the logs what is happening. Okay. So here, if I click on logs, here you will see that first event is basically a test event, as I have already told you. The, for the next event, the bucket name it is printing, and object name is setosa.csv. Setosa file we have uploaded in bucket level, so it is printing that. Now another object we have uploaded inside a folder. So here bucket name it is printing the same, but object name first it is giving the folder name and then it is giving the object what we uploaded. Okay, so that means it is perfectly working as expected. Now what about the code? What we are doing here? Let's try to understand. Okay, so first thing here if you observe this for loop, first here I am extracting the value corresponding to the key records from the event. Okay, so let's see in CloudWatch how it came. So if I just expand that. Here you will see how the event has came. Okay, so I will copy just this one, and here I will open Google Chrome, and here I will go to JSON formatter. Okay, and here I will click on this JSON formatter, and I will paste this one. Okay, and here I will click on process. So this is the processed JSON how it is looking. So some part I can minimize, like message attribute I can minimize. Okay. And this attribute section also not required. So if you see that here inside events records is the main key, which is basically coming as one array, right? So that's why I have basically iterated here for i in event of records because as you can clearly see here, the records key has value which is one array. Here you can see the array is started and in the end here array is closed, right? And inside that here body is there, right? And in body, if you see in the event, it is a S3 test event. So I am checking whether this is S3 test event or not. So if you see here the code, first here I am reading the body part. Okay. So I is basically taking individual value from the array for the key records. And here I am using JSON.loads because if you see the body part here, body in this particular place, it is coming as a string. But actually, it is dictionary, right? So first, I am using JSON dot loads to convert that string to dictionary format or JSON format. Okay, right? So here I have used that JSON dot loads, and then I have checked whether event this particular key is there or not in that dictionary. And if it is there, what is the value for the key event? If it is S three test event or not? And again, if you see here, same thing. I just followed what is showing here, right? Here. Inside body, whether event key is there or not, and if it is there, whether event key is S3 test event or not. If it is there, here I am printing. It is just a test event. Else, I am doing this activity. So, what is this activity? This activity is for our normal messages. Okay, not the test message. So, let's see. So, I I can pick up event for one normal message, and I can copy this one. And here I can go to JSON formatter, and here I can remove this earlier one. And paste the new set, and I can process. So this is basically how one event comes for a particular object when we are uploading in S3. Okay, so attributes I can minimize, message attribute also I can minimize. Again, here also records is there. Records is one array. Inside that, this is the body. Okay, now this time this body contains all the informations about actual S3 events. Okay, so let me just take this particular body part completely. Okay, and let me show you in Google Colab separately. So here I will import JSON, and here ma is equal to JSON dot loads. Here I will paste that particular stuff, and here I will run that, and here I will print that. Okay. So if I just print that, see how the events are coming. From SQS, okay. So this is how one ideal message is coming. 
so inside that also there is a key called records okay so that's why in the lambda code here i have used another for loop which is basically inner for loop for j in s3 event of records and then here i need the bucket name and key for which the event got triggered okay where i will get that so if you see when i'm iterating in this particular array suppose i have picked up the first json or dictionary here s3 is the parent level key inside that bucket is one key inside that name is another key and there the bucket name is available so like that same way i have taken j of s3 of bucket of name and i need the key also that is actual file name with the folder details so here in the object section you will see that is basically that is inside s3 then inside object then inside key actual file name is present so like that same way here i have written s3 of object of name. okay so this is how it is uploaded even for the third event also you can see the same how it is happening i will copy this and show you so here i will go here i will just delete this particular place i will process that one and here i will take this particular body part okay and here i will go here let me just remove that one this one dot loads let's just print so here you can see that again structure is same now this time only difference is inside s3 there is an object key inside object there is a key called key only and inside that here you can see the file name is coming along with the complete folder location because this varsicolor.csv we have uploaded inside a folder and that folder is present inside our bucket okay right so from this particular key you can get the complete folder path along with file name right so this is how it is working and now whatever you want you can do from this lambda maybe you can send all these s3 file names to glue job that glue job can read directly from s3 and process it using PySpark code or you can send to emr or in lambda itself you can process right so this is how using simple python code you can set up this very popular serverless data pipeline i hope you understood this all the codes i'll be providing in the description box or in the comment section if you find this video helpful then please like share and comment subscribe our channel if you're not subscribed till now and don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos thank you